Okay, so thought for the day. Uh, so Todd sort of touched on it a little bit, and certainly I want to talk a little bit about love. And, and what happens sometimes is our small self, our self-absorbed self, our preoccupied self, will be replaced eventually, gradually, by love itself. I, I witnessed that here uh, with, with on Friday, you know, before Halloween. You know, you brought your kids in and, and you were just delighting in them. And I watched your faces as you would bring them into my office, and um, and you were just you had just lost yourself. You had been replaced, fully replaced by love itself, which is a joyful place to be. That's where the joy is. So then you found your true self, really in loving. And loving this kid who's dressed like a ninja or whatever the heck, you know, and, and, and you're just, uh, you, know, you could see it in your face and, and you were, as the poet says, you were singing the song without the words. And, and that's exactly right. This morning I got up, uh, I always get up early, but I was on a Zoom really early with this woman um, who I found out I, I, I knew her father many years ago. And he was the best mechanic in... Uh, in Boyle Heights, his name was Dennis. Uh, Yoshi, uh, Dennis, uh, we just call him Dennis Yoshimoto. And he ran Moss's Auto Repair on Brooklyn. In those days, it was called Brooklyn Avenue. Yeah. I always thought Moss's was more, like in Spanish, but no, it's uh, for his dad, Masato. Uh, and, and if you don't know that, in Boyle Heights before the war, uh, it was the most integrated, diverse community on the planet. I mean, the, the most integrated high school in the United States of America was Roosevelt High. Yeah. Japanese American, African American, Mexican American, uh, Russian Jews, it was, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it, uh, Dennis's father was interned uh, at one of those internment camps, which was a horrible uh, black mark in our history. So I was talking to her uh, this morning, and, and so it, it triggered uh, um, a story that she uh, reminded me of, that years ago I met, I met a kid named Danny who was kind of living in his car and he was selling PCP and crack to kind of buy, you know, to McDonald's and feed himself. And, and so I met him and I did one of those, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up thing. And he said, well, I want to be a mechanic. And, <laughs> and he goes, I don't know anything about cars, but I'd love to learn. So I went to Dennis, my mechanic, and Dennis it was a tall, skinny, uh, uh, drink of water, tall, and uh, he was not a man of few words, he was a man of no damn words at all. He just didn't speak, he smoked, and he was a chain smoker. He always had a cigarette uh, dangling from his lips and he would light it uh, one after another. And uh, you would hand him the keys to your car and you say, Dennis, I don't know, there's a noise under the hood, and you'd come back next day and he'd hand you the keys, and no words were exchanged in the course of this interaction. So, um, so I sit him down in his office, and, and he's just smoking up a storm. I said, hire this kid, Danny. You know, he doesn't know anything about you know, cars, but he'd like to learn, he's so eager. And, and Dennis would take a you know, mean old drag on a cigarette and, and didn't say anything, and then I, I would redouble my efforts. You know, this, it won't, it's not one job for one kid, it's like, It'll have ripple effect, peace in our whole community, and you just continued to smoke. And then I, you know, put my top hat and my cane on, and I was doing my song and dance, and I was saying, you know, uh, Nobel Peace Prize, and we'll change the course of history. I don't know what I did. I was inventing all these things. <laughs> Nothing. He just smoked. So I gave up until finally he took one last long drag on his cigarette and smoke was wafting in front of his face. And this was the only thing he said to me that day. I will teach him everything I know. And so he did, and uh, Danny became a mechanic. And he'd come into our office in those days on First Street and he'd say, I, I did a new job today, I, I, I fixed the carburetor all by myself. Once he came in and he hand, handed me a photograph, and there is this picture of Danny, big old beaming smile, axle grease smeared on his face, his work shirt with Danny embroidered on it. And there's no doubt in anybody's mind that this job had altered the course of his history. And then standing next to him with his arm around him with a cigarette dangling out of his mouth is Dennis, equally certain 
that having hired this kid changed his life too. There comes a moment when your tiny small self, the one that's self-absorbed and self-preoccupied, uh, is replaced by love itself. Surrender to that. It's a glorious thing. You all have an experience of it. You like what it feels like. Just do it more. And then you end up singing the song without the words and never stopping at all.